because he loves us. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up your hands and worship.
Come on, raise it up from the earth. The Bible said the Father seeketh such to worship Him. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And we come this Sunday morning to give Him all the honor. To give Him all the glory. Come on, this is time of intimacy with God. And you have to tell Him how you feel about Him. You have to tell Him how holy He is and how good He is. Just love on your Savior. Love on your Redeemer. He is the keeper of our soul. I like that. That's beautiful worship. Come on, let me hear God behind me. Just take some time. Come out of yourself and forget about everything that's going on and whatever's going wrong. And just worship Him. With the fruit of your lips, we speak well of Him.
Hallelujah to Jesus. So I'm talking about all Nicky Balanchi. Oh, the Bacanda de Bagosha. And the Bacopia. And the Bacopia. Oh, shit. Righteousness 
for his name's sake. So far, the reading of the scriptures. Thank you. I want to just for a few moments talk, teach and preach from the call. A time of refreshing. A time of refreshing. People of God, if you have been following us virtually, you know that we have already crossed over into a new year. You know that. You, you know that year 2020 is in the past. It is behind us. It is ever etched and burned into, if I can use that word, into the minds and the hearts and the very souls of any and every person who lived through it. We are now sojourning through 2021. Already, this Sunday is the 10th. We're 10 days in to a new year. The days are rolling. The times are rolling. The moments are fleeting. And we have declared here at New Haven, in this cathedral, we have declared what will be our focus for ministry in 2021. We have declared that this is the season to refresh, renew, and restart. Since refreshing is what I'm talking about today, we find that coming from our text in Psalm 23 and 3. We'll talk about renewing being, being taken from 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. And we'll talk about restarting, which is taken from Isaiah 43 and 19. Everything that we do in this year, as we've always done, is covered, supported, and guided by the Word of God. Because anytime you get out of the word of God, that becomes man-made, that becomes cynical, it becomes flesh, it becomes carnality. But if it is in the word of God, it is both life and it is spirit. And we are grateful that in this season, that is what God spoke to the man of God. I want to remind the people, I think we've been out of church so long, we forgot how vision works. Vision does not come from the ankles up to the head. I can't get no help. It don't come from the big toe up to the head. It don't come from the sole of your crusty feet up to the head. The Bible said the anointing comes from the head and it goes down even to your skirt tail. So it is the position, it is the authority, it is the privilege divinely and sublime for the leader to declare what the direction for the ministry, for the church, for the people is going to be. And unfortunately, as we all know, those of us who are tenured leaders, we know that everybody won't tap into the vision. But don't worry about it. That's why the Bible said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables. That they that run might, that read it might run. And though the vision tarry, wait on it. For the vision is for uh, an appointed time. It is here that for this Zion that I found it very prudent. I wasn't even looking for a theme. In fact, I had told the team. I said, I don't, I don't believe there's going to be no thing for the year. I, don't, I haven't heard from God yet. I have not heard him tell me anything. I don't believe in declaring it unless the mouth of God has spoken it. And just as sure as I'm standing before you, it came to me clear as the sun in the day. He said, tell the people that it's time to refresh, it's time to renew, and it's time to restart. I want the four people here to say, refresh, renew, and restart. I want you to holler it again like you're hollering for the coats that won a few days ago. Praise the Lord. And I want you to say refresh, renew, and restart. Isn't it, isn't it important? Isn't it? Isn't this fitting? Isn't this very, very much, very much applicable in this season that God would declare to a people, to a Zion, to a body of believers who so desperately needed to know what direction would we take people sheep sheep are better when you give them direction that don't mean they'll always follow the direction because sometimes they wander off in the other vineyards and they fall down in pits and they get caught in the thicket but that's why you have a shepherd because he sees that fearing he sees that wandering and it's his job to lead the 99 
and go get the sheep. Not the wolf, but the sheep. Not the goat, but the sheep. Uh, there's a difference. I'll talk about that at another time. But, but we find here in the Psalm of David, Psalm 23, uh, which we know is a very familiar portion of Scripture. For some reason, it is considered, and you know the reason, this is considered a song of comfort and encouragement. Oftentimes, you hear Psalm 23 raised in times of trouble, raised in times of despair, raised in times of bereavement. It is here that we typically allow the words of David, the king, the man after God's own heart, of the anointed of God, that we hear him encouraging the people of God through a very personal approach. If you remember this division of Psalm being the 23rd, this great hymnal of the Hebrew people, a psalm, a book full of praise and singing and spiritual poetic genius. You, you hear as he opens, the Lord is my shepherd. You, you understand the personal approach that, that David uh, takes when he writes Psalm 23. Historians would, would suggest that it was here after David had freed himself from king, from the king Absalom that desired to kill him because of his fame has spread abroad and the favor of God had visited David from the time he was a shepherd boy until the time he became the king of Israel that, that he was hated and sought out to be killed by his adversary but it is here that he sits down and he writes this great song after he received a mighty deliverance somebody say deliverance but it comes in a time in David's life and in a time with his walk with God that David needed to be renewed. He needed to be refreshed. And I don't know how you feel about it today, but I believe if I could do a poll and if I could, if I could take a census of the people of God, you would probably say, Bishop, I know what David was talking about because I ended up in seasons and times where I just needed to be refreshed. I didn't necessarily need you to change nothing, but I just simply needed you to give me a refreshing. I just simply needed you to wash me again. I just needed to feel your love again. Anybody ever been in a situation and in a, in a continuance where you declared that, Lord, if you're not going to take me out of it, at least give me a re-energizing gift. Spirit. I know. I know Galatians ain't got nothing on 
you. I know. I know you anointed from your big toe to the tonsils and the back of your throat. But I know that there's some of us with all this Holy Ghost and with all of this power and with all of this church and with all of these titles and with all of these uniforms and with all of these appointments. But we can get to a point where I'm tired. Can I preach, Sister Hamlet? You feel like Mary did when Jesus showed up. Said Mary was conquered because she was overwhelmed with the work of the ministry. Oh, every now and then you get overwhelmed. You get tired. You get lethargic. And we try to speak in tongues and speak our way through it. And we try to dance through it. And we try to prophesy our way through it. And sometimes that is effective. But then there's other times tongue talking don't do the job. Oh, I'm making the church people mad now. Because when you get done, when you get done doing all of that, you still got to face a devil in his face. And you still, let me tell you something, just because you got the Holy Ghost, don't mean you don't feel the sting of the problem. You got feelings with the Holy Ghost. You have emotions with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, preach, Bishop. I'm that's all I'm trying to say. I'm, trying, I'm just trying to tell you because, see, we, we don't want to be honest. We don't want to be honest. And New Haven knows how I feel about feelings. I don't believe the kingdom has a place for feelings. We ain't got time for you to be in your feelings. Jasmine Sullivan just came out a few months ago and told you to come pick up your feelings. Y'all ain't going to hear me. She said, I don't have a uh, brand new phone, who is this? Uh, new number don't exist. Y'all yeah, know the song. Uh, brand new like the whip. Uh, gas is way too expensive. Uh, you should have me come and pick up your uh, feelings uh, while I'm up cleaning. I can't, I can't get no help here uh, because feelings carry a cost. Uh, feelings carry a burden. Uh, and once there's no room for feelings, uh, that don't mean I don't have just cause I'm saved just because I'm sanctified just because I'm anointed doesn't mean I don't feel oh that's what's wrong with church people that's what's wrong with the body of Christ we've lost our feelings that's why you can treat people any kind of way and say any kind of thing and do whatever to people because you don't have no emotion you're cold hearted you're placid you're hard hearted and stiff necked but when you are in tune, you understand that there comes a time, let me get out of this text, where you have to be refreshed and you got to be renewed. There's nothing worse than a person that's been exercising all day, working hard and toiling, and won't take a shower. I can't, that's nasty. You're funky. You stink. You're musty. You need a shower. You're not fully clean unless you're successfully clean. You need you understand every now and then the body needs to be washed. Like I said, every now and then, but y'all been doing it several times a day. Do it when you wake up. Do it when you go to bed. Do it in the middle of the day if you have an argument and a hard day. But you can't worry about the body being clean and ignore the soul needing to be clean. It was from the early years when David tended his father's flock to his dying days and he was both shepherd and king. David was a man that proved God in the text. He says, Lord, he restores my soul. He continues here to declare that he guides me. Somebody say guide me. In the path of righteousness, not for my sake, but for his Sake. These poetic and powerful words are coming from a man who had personal vicissitudes, who had personal mistakes, who, who had personal setbacks, who, who not only was targeted, but who put himself out there to be targeted. It is here that he brings forth a, a didactical approach and display of God's soulless sympathy, healing, and hope to a brokenness in his soul both Jew and Gentile saved and unsaved, black and white red and yellow have got to be in a season
season where restoration is your plight. He first had to be restored in soul to the newness of life, to the quickening of the power of God, through the power of his resurrection. When we first trusted God, am I preaching here? We declared that he would be our restoration. Oh, David said he restores and he restores my soul. You, you don't get to that point until you realize that your soul is in trouble. And I think I got some people here that are willing to agree with me that, that if you continue in darkness, if you continue in brokenness, if you abide in sin, your soul is in trouble. And you're going to need God to bring restoration. I just wonder, does anybody know what it is? Would them I know what it is to be refreshed? If you don't know, I'm going to tell you because while we're praying for houses and cars, we should be praying for God to refresh. And the word refreshed, according to Webster, simply tells us that it means to uh, have regained strength or energy. Uh, now, did you hear what I said? Having regained. If I regained, that means I already had it. But somewhere I lost my strength. But if I believe God like I say I do, He's going to give the ability to restore what I thought I had lost. I'm getting ready to leave you alone here, but David, David is clear. David is not mincing his words. David is not leaving anything to the imagination. Because before you can appreciate Psalm 23, you first have got to appreciate how David ended up in Psalm 23. And I just want to tell a few of you watching that you don't have to explain your restorative process. Because in order to appreciate how I got restored, you first got to know what I lost. In order to appreciate the fact that God is putting something back in me, you got to appreciate how hard the journey was for me to get here.
Yeah.
practice like that. To every man and woman, boy and girl, whoever needed God to do it again. That mean you didn't have it, you had it. According to the text, but somewhere you lost it or it got depleted. Storms will do that to you. Trouble will wear you out. Evil and deceitfulness and neg negativity will pull on your spirit, man. But you have to have enough in you to declare the Lord is in a season where I'm going to be refreshed. The word refresh, renewed, restore. They walk hand in hand. But as I declare for this church for the next 365 days, for those that are willing to see God on another level, you can declare that I am in a time of refreshing. When I think about it, that movie, Waiting to Exhale, was all about women that were broken due to different types of things. Every character had a different kind of brokenness. If I can get you to relate this with the spirit. But the end of the movie is a perfect conclusion of a refreshed person. Whether you were with me or whether he was that one lady I like. Y'all don't remember the names of the way they say, it's been since 92 or 93, they don't remember. But you remember. Just have to take a breath. Take a break. Every now and then you just gotta inhale and exhale. You just don't need to do that in the body. You need to do that in the spirit. And let God wash you. You can't Nothing in the earth can refresh you. If you're looking for it through relationships and jobs and promotions and money, you're looking in the wrong places. There's a lot of people with good jobs that need refreshing. Somebody say amen. A lot of people with plenty of money. And they're just as unhappy as they want to be because none of these things can bring you what only God can. So I declare to you for this. And then next Sunday we're going to talk about renewing. And the next Sunday we're going to talk about restoring. But today, I want you to refresh. Let God do it. Let God come in. Block out the noise. Block out all of the stuff that don't matter. As we get ready to go into a season of fasting and consecration, that's what you're going to have to do. If you're going to get what you need from God during that time, you're going to have to block out stuff that don't matter. Stuff that ain't adding to you. Stuff that's not bringing you strength. You're going to have to block it out. I know in this age, we doing all this universal earth stuff. We don't believe in that over here. We don't believe in that. Some of my members are practicing it. You didn't learn that here. I don't teach that. I believe in the Bible. I believe that don't talk to me about no universe. Talk to me about he who made it. That's where my strength comes from. I can tell me to lift up my eyes to the universe and lift my eyes to the heel. Y'all don't like this and it'll get me in trouble, but I ain't scared of y'all. I declare it. The word of God takes preeminence. Many false teachings have risen amongst us, but only the word of God is going to stand. I can go home and sit in a tub full of blessed oil, but that ain't going to refresh me. I'll just be greasy. It'll take you six years to get all that oil out your pipes and out your tub. You better call Rotor Rooter if you don't need it. I can go back here and sit in this baptismal pool full of water, but that ain't going to refresh me neither. I'll just be sitting in water. Only God can refresh. Can I get a witness? I got some witnesses in All this stuff we doing ain't going to refresh us. All of it has a place and all of it has a purpose. But when you get to the point where you need to be washed and you need to be refreshed and you need to be endowed, only the Holy Ghost can wash, can baptize. The fire of His Spirit will burn up 
things that don't need to be there. And the Spirit of God will wash you thoroughly. But you got to tell Him to endow you, to fill you. That's what you need to see. I know this ain't the season of Pentecost, but some of you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's going to give you what you need. I want to invite you to get to know Jesus now on the pardon of your sins. I want you to get to know him in a personal way. I want you to give your life to him just by simply declaring that you are a sinner. And that God had died for your sin and that he was raised from the dead for the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And that one day he's coming back to church to quicken the dead and his reward is with him. If you believe that, if you're saved, call that Pastor old Caroline. Tell us that the Lord has saved you. If you desire to unite with our church and we become your virtual church and I'm your virtual pastor for this season until we can come together, we welcome you to come me. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. Oh Lord. That's what you want him to do. Is to endow you, your family, your children, to be endowed so that you might be refreshed. Yeah. That's that's our prayer. That's our decree. I want you to type in the comments. I am going to be refreshed. Let the world know that the refreshing has come. After you have done that, I want you to get your seat again. You've been seeing it all morning how to give and how to connect. It only works if you work it. This is the season where you've got to have a seed to put in the ground. New Haven, I want you to continue to be faithful, cheerful, and generous. Those that support our ministry that are not a part of our church, you too, can be a blessing to the work and the ministry of this great church. Hallelujah. Find, find one of those four ways to give, and don't you ever think you're going to be God given, no matter how hard you try. Hallelujah. God desires you to be faithful. And if you be faithful over a few things, He'll make you a ruler over many. Glory to God. And as you sow that seed, and as we get ready to leave you, we'll see you next time. But I want you just to declare one more time down in the comments as you like, love, and share this worship experience. I want you to type and declare with your fingers, but say it out of your mouth as you type it. I am refreshed. And if you believe that, God's going to do something for you. Now I pronounce the blessing with the grace of God and the love. We commune of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide for each of us. Hence, we'll never have until we meet again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. We'll see you.